Luke and Miss Katie before I ever knew Brother Carpenter and Miss Angela. And they would uh, come to youth camp that we did. I guess they preached for Brother Coley the week before. I, I can't remember the situation. And then I had an opportunity to come up here and I just told Brother uh, Carpenter, I mean, y'all got a bunch of kids, you know. Uh, I, I don't know the reason why y'all couldn't come where we were at, but I said, well, there's a camp just down the road, and I guess he looked into it. And the first year we weren't able to come, and uh, every year we've been able to come. Amen. And uh, so thank y'all for letting us be a part of your lives. Uh, many people have reached out to me from this church and has said, hey, I'm praying for you, and so I, I appreciate Amen. that. Amen. Brother D'Angelo, you say, I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. You say that was her friend? Okay. <laughs> Well, I, was just, I, I want to make sure I heard that right because, you know, me and Miss Tyne were friends. <laughs> now we've been married 35 years, brother. <laughs> I had to tell you, sometimes. <laughs> but if the man's going on a cruise, I mean, look. He ain't coming back. Oh, okay. Well, you know, ma'am. Well, I didn't gave up on the matchmaking business. It just don't, it don't work. I mean, but uh, I, I told. Uh, he said, if you're a Mikey, it wasn't Mikey. Well, his wife's sweet. Yeah. Man, I, I talked to her. She, she seemed to be, well, I thought she had a good sense, but. <laughs> hey, man, we're just picking at you, brother. We're just picking at you. I appreciate everybody here. and I do ask you, if you weren't here for Sunday school, please, we have a special one spoken I need prayer about. And, um, you know, I don't mind, you know, telling you, if, you know, if you want to, but I won't say because of the recording. But I, I, we, we need, our, our family needs special prayer. Psalms 143 this morning. Sometimes, you know, you, you want to try to give something uh, as we get ready to, kick off camp or, uh, you know, you, you just want to make sure you get the will of, in the mind of God. And I, I think this is what the Lord would have me say this morning. Psalms 143, we'll begin reading in <coughs> verse number 1. The Bible said, Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplication. Thy faithfulness answer me. And in thy righteousness, enter not into judgment with thy servant, for in the sight, uh, for in thy sight, no man, no living man is justified. For the enemy hath persecuted my soul; he hath smitten my life down to the ground, to be made, uh, to be made me, that hath made me dwell in darkness, as those that have been long dead. Therefore, my spirit overwhelmed. Within me, my heart within me is desolate. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the work of thy hands. I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsteth after thee as a thirsty land, Salah. Hear me speedily, O Lord. My spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down into a pit. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning. For in thee do I trust, cause me to know thy way within, uh, wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto thee. Deliver me, O Lord, from my enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake, for thy righteousness' sake. Bring out my soul out of trouble. And of thy mercy cut off my enemies and destroy all them that afflict my soul. For I am, for I am thy servant. Now, because, you know, I don't want to go too long. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you something about these scriptures and I'll give you the title of the message. First of all, in verses 1 through 3, this man's in darkness. Yes, he is. Now, this ain't a guy that don't know God. He's right. in darkness. Right. This is a man after God's own heart, right. David. A man that the Bible said was God's apple. He is an apple of his eye. He is in darkness. 
Now, I noticed something as I was rereading this this morning. And in verse number 3, he said, For my enemies have persecuted my soul. He hath smitten my life down to the ground. He hath made me to dwell in darkness as those that have been uh, have been long dead. This how bad his darkness was, depression, whatever you want to call it, yeah. that he was in himself, he felt like he was dead. Yeah. Yeah. He felt like spiritually he was dead. And he, so we notice there's darkness, but in verse number four, read with me if you would. Therefore, in my spirit, overwhelm me within me, my heart within me is desolate. Mm -hmm. Now, Joe and I looked up the word desolate, <laughs> and I'm not going to ask you what it means. <laughs> but I thought this was very interesting the word desolate. It means destitute or deprived of inhabitants. Now, this is 1828, but this is the thing that caught me. Deserted, watch it, of God. Deserted of God. Here's a man that's in darkness. We find his desolation. But look at verse 5 and 6. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the works of thy hands. You know what he's saying now? Not only do we find his darkness, but his desolation, but in those desperate dark hours, he begins to reminisce about the days of old. About the days that God has delivered him, amen. Yeah, yeah. About the days, yeah, bless amen. God, that yeah. God's been good to him, amen. Yeah. And God's been faithful to him. Uh, hey, in your darkest, in your yeah, destitute right. of your spirit, you can still yeah, remember right. the goodness yeah. of God because yeah. God's been good, amen. Yeah. Woo, he's yeah. good, man. Yeah. I'm telling you, even though you might be in trouble this morning, even this morning you might be going through hard times, remember the days of old, amen. God's still on the throne, amen. God can still deliver us. Amen. I told Mr. Angela and Brother Carpenter, I found out something good about me that y'all would really enjoy. Uh, I've got a North Carolina bloodline. My dad is from North Carolina. Oh, and they said, we, I said, Dad, do we, do, is our blood uh, uh, Carolina blue or Duke blue? Duke blue you got saved. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't have no clue what I was talking about. He don't know nothing but football. But I can remember, even though I've been through dark times, yeah, go ahead. and even though I felt like, hey, God, where are you at? Yeah. I can still look back yeah. and I can remember the days of old. Amen. I can remember standing and shouting in church. I can yeah. remember how God's blessed Good. me. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, I don't know where you're at this morning. Go ahead, brother. I don't know what problems. You say, well, does these kids got problems? Oh, yeah, they got problems. Yeah, right. Amen. We, we thinking, hey, everything's out. Hey, you, we don't know the troubles that they're facing. Right. Amen. Do you understand there's an epidemic in America where kids are taking their own lives? Amen. Something has happened to them. They're in darkness. Amen. Yeah. They're desolate. The word desolate, just by, uh, they're saying deserted of God. They're destitute, they're deprived of inhabitants. Amen. I'm telling you this morning, this man is in darkness and he's desolate, but he still can remember the days of old. Mm -hmm. But I want you to look in verse 7. Hear me speedily. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. Oh, Lord. My spirit faileth. Yeah. Hide not thy face from me. Yes, yes. Least I be like unto them that go down in the pit. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness yes, in the morning. Yes. For indeed I do trust. Mm -hmm. You know what he's saying? He said, look, I'm in darkness. I'm yeah, in desolation. Yeah. I remember the days right. of old, but I need something now. Yes. Amen. Right. And listen, right. this was his desire. He said, I need to hear you again. Yeah. This is what I want to preach on. How to give God's attention. Yeah, that's good. You know what we want to do this week that's at good. camp? Yeah. We want to get God's attention. Yeah. 
And I'm not talking about being vulgar and demanding God's attention, amen. Right. We just want to get a hold of God because yeah. I'm telling you, if you we've been, it's been a whole year since we've been at camp. Yes, we've had revivals, amen. Yes, yeah. we're trying to walk daily, but I'm telling you, the cares of this life seem to choke out the life of a Christian, right. amen. Right. And listen, right now, maybe there's some of you this morning, uh, you ain't heard from God in a long time, amen. Uh, you, you haven't had a, a walk with God in a long time. Yeah. I'm here to tell you, friend, and uh, uh, your desire this morning is to uh, get a hold of God and get his attention. Because yeah. God is ready yes. to hear from you. Yes, he is. He's ready to hear yes, from you. He How to get God's attention. I'm going to give you four people in the Bible that got God's attention. Yeah, go that got God's attention. Let's go over to the New Testament this morning. Quickly this morning. I want you to look at Mark chapter number 5. Now you said this is just a simple message. Well, uh, listen, I'm just a simple guy, and I figured, you know, as Brother Charlie used to say, you put the cookies on the bottom shelf so everybody can eat. Amen? Yeah. And so that's just who I am. Yeah. That's how God wired me. I'm not going to be up here and be yeah. mis uh, uh, conduct, Amen? Brother, you know, I, I can't do all that. Yeah. I can just do who God made me. Amen? Yeah. And in Mark chapter number, uh, uh, what did I say, Mark 5? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's no Mark ten. I'm sorry, Mark ten. We will be going to Mark chapter five though here in a minute. Yeah. Amen. But Mark chapter ten. Look at verse forty six. And they came into Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people. Now you notice something here. God's with other people. God's yeah. in a multitude. Uh, and blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the wayside big. I mean, here's this guy. I mean, boy, will we, can we all agree this man's desperate, amen? Yeah. I'm telling you something. I don't want to ever be blind. Uh, I, I don't want to ever be in that situation. This man's on the wayside begging, uh, and here comes the Lord, amen? And he's with a great multitude of people, and here this man is. He's on the wayside, and he's begging. But when he heard, thank God he wasn't deaf and blind. Hey man, you might be blinded spiritually this morning, but thank God you can still hear God. Hey Amen. Uh, and when he heard, listen to the preacher, when he heard, uh, hey man, let, let's go there and read it. Uh, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and yep. say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Right. You know what he's trying to say? Hey God, I need you to teach it. Hey God, I need you to teach it. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Let me get some water because I'm going to need some water. This man is desperate. Yes, sir. He's in darkness. Yes. By the way, he's alone. Yeah. He's destitute. Yeah. But he has heard yeah. about a man named Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. He's, had a, he's heard about him. Yeah. He's never laid eyes on him. Right. Can I tell you something? I've never laid eyes on I Jesus. Yeah. I've never seen him physically, right. but I'm telling you something. One day I heard about yeah. him. Yeah. One day somebody told me about Jesus. Yeah. Amen. I'm telling you, boy, it was the sweetest story ever told. How somebody loved me when I wasn't lovable. Yeah, Amen. Right. <laughs> but he said, he said this, and he cried, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Now look at verse 48. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. Yeah. You know what aggravates me? Yeah. Hey, man, you ain't in his situation. Yeah, right. I mean, people in the church, they cry out to God, and they say, well, it ain't nothing to do for all that. Well, hey, listen, you ain't in that situation, amen. Yes, sir. Amen, but they were doing that. He said, oh, that, that guy's just a beggar. Don't listen to him. He just need to hold your peace. Uh, the Lord don't care. I mean, that's what the enemy tells you. The Lord don't care. He don't care what situation you're in. Uh, you just hold your peace over there. And, boy, I like what blind Bartimaeus done, amen. He didn't listen to him, amen. He said, I got to get God's attention. Somehow, I got to get a hold of God, amen. Uh, and this is what he said, uh, in verse number uh, 49, I'm sorry, uh, 48, and many charged that he should hold his peace. He cried the more great deal, thy son of David, have mercy on me. Look at verse 49. And Jesus stood what? Still. Guess who, guess what? He got God's attention. Yes, yes. He's walking through. He's got a multitude. And he hears somebody crying out yes. to him. Uh, and immediately the Bible said he stood still. Yes. 
You know, the first thing you can do is say, well, preacher, I don't know how to get to God's hand. Just cry out That's to right. him. That's yeah, hey, right. Amen. Some, some of us in here just need to cry out to yeah. God. Yeah. Hey man, I, I'm telling you, why are you going to stay in that darkness? Why are you going to stay in that destitution? Uh, hey man, just cry out to him. Yes. I think he's been blind long enough. Right. Yeah. I think he said, I'm tired of being on disability. Yeah. Yeah. I'm tired of getting a check from the government. Hey man, I need some help from God, and you're the only one that can give it to right. me. Right. I can't go into details, but I was talking to my son the other day. And he was, just, he was just weeping, my older son. And he called me and, man, it breaks my heart. And this is what I told him. I said, son, I would carry this for you if I could. Yeah, amen. But I cannot carry this yeah. and I cannot fix this. Right. But I said, I know a man that can carry yeah. it. Yeah. And I know a man that can fix this. Right. I said, son, you're just going to have to lean on him yeah. the best way you know how. Mm -hmm. right. my, my older boy, and I, I love him. I love all my kids. Mm -hmm. He got out of church. Well, you ain't some kind of preacher. Yeah, he's of age. Yeah, amen. He got out of church. You don't bring up church to him. That's just a subject we don't talk about. We, we just don't, you ain't bringing it up. He called me yesterday. Mom was coming up, and we were discussing the situation, and he said, Daddy, I, he, said, uh, he said, have we made it yet, there yet? I said, no, you think it's 10 o'clock. We ain't making it nowhere. <laughs> and uh, he said, Daddy, I, I guess who's coming to church with me? Look at him. You don't go to church. He said, Mama's going to come to church with me. And when, I, when God just said it, I got him. Amen, I got him. Amen, I got him. My heart swelled within me. He said, and when I get through with church, I'm going to go to y'all's house and I'm going to cook mama dinner. You know what that boy, he's going to have to cry out to God. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I said, look, son, we don't, we don't need gifts. I don't need no more gifts. Amen, I don't need that. I said, it's the little things. And I'm going to tell you something. You don't know. And I ain't even talked to my wife yet. I said, you don't know what that meant to her. Because, mm -hmm. see, we grew up, my whole family in church. Amen, we worshiped in church just like your family. <laughs> what would you do tomorrow? If you went to church and your dad wasn't there for you. Or your mom. Mm -hmm. This man was so desperate that he had just called out to God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe you ain't got that desperate yet. But I'm telling you, there's help for you. Yeah, amen. Yes, amen. He called out to him. Mm -hmm. And the Bible said, and the Lord stood still. You said, well, he's too busy working with other people. Did I just tell you? Did you not just hear what I said? Yeah, right. He was with a multitude of people. Right. He ain't too busy. That's right. He ain't too busy to hear what you've got to say. That's right. Problem is, is when the crowd or the enemy or the devil tells us, hold your peace, we listen to them. All God wants to do is hear. Listen, he ain't heard from some of you in a long time. You ain't called out on his own. So you wonder, well, I can't get his attention. How about just crying out to him? Yeah, amen. Amen. How about crying out to him? Let, let's look at this story real quick. Because uh, if I don't hurry up, people are going to be upset. <laughs> look at verse 49. And Je Jesus stood still and commanded him to be and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good comfort. Rise, watch it. He called it for thee. Yeah. You know what? You know what the, they're telling him? You got God's attention. Yes, yeah. sir. He called it for thee. Amen. Hey, Amen. I'm about to run this place and. Amen, bro. And he, watch what he does. Casting away his garments. 
Why'd he do that? He don't need no beggar clothes no more. Yeah. Yeah. He's done with the begging business. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Some of y'all ain't getting this. Maybe yeah. I'm just happy Go today. I, I, I mean, he said, hey, I no, no longer need to beg no more. Yeah. I ain't going to be blind no more. Yeah. Hey, man, I ain't going to need yeah. no government assistance yeah. no more. Go I left the king yeah. of king and the Lord of lords. I got a hold yeah. of him. Yeah. He's going to do something in my life that I can't do, the government yeah. can't yeah. do, yeah. the world can't do. Yeah. Hey, he's going to fix me. Yeah. 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 So I don't need them clothes. Yeah. God, he got a robe of righteousness he's yeah, going to put on me. Yeah. Amen. Right. Yeah. I'm telling you, this, this boy right here, the world had thrown away. The world had said, hey, yeah, leave him alone. Right. But he said, I am desperate. I'm destitute. Yeah. I got a desire. And you say, well, what about the days of old? He probably had heard that God had been healing folks. Amen. Yeah. And he said, hey, just watch it. Have mercy right. on me. Yes, sir. You know what the Lord said? Well, I tell you one thing, the reason you're blind is because you were sinning all your life and I just had to strike you down, amen, yeah. <coughs> Ain't what the Lord. Yeah. So y'all think if you call on him, he'll scold you. No, he just wants to bring you to the phone. Right. Right. He just wants to bring yeah. you back. Hey, y'all know that song, The Voice of the Shepherd? Yo, y'all ever listen to Dave Dawn? Every time I tell them, learn it. Well, we ain't never heard it. They ain't never heard no songs I know. <laughs> the Voice of the Shepherd. He's calling Man, he's calling the voice yeah, of the shepherd. Right. Man, he's seeking and he's looking and listen, uh, he's looking for that lamb. Yeah. And the Bible said in Luke chapter 15 that he left the 99. Yeah. Yeah. And watch it. There's a one word in there, brother. Until he found him. Yeah. You know what the Lord's been doing to some of you? Yeah. He's been looking for you. I wonder as the Lord was looking. Now, we know the Lord knew where the sheep was. I mean, I know it's a parable. But I wondered he was just wanting to hear the, the voice of the sheep. Yeah. Calling out to him. That's good. That's good. He got God's attention. Yes, he did. Let me go to Mark chapter 5 real quick. Mark chapter 5. And you know the rest of the story. The Lord said, what, what can I do for you? He did not say, can you increase my benefits? Yeah. He said, I just want to see. Yeah, amen. Hey, that's a real, just one request. I want to see. Mm-hmm. Maybe all you got is one thing. Yeah. The Lord knows. Yeah, he can do it. Mark chapter 5, look at verse 21. Mm-hmm. And when Jesus passed over again by the ship to the other side, and watch it, much people gathered unto him. He was nigh to see, and behold, there came one ruler of the synagogue, Jairus, by name. When he saw him, he fell down at his feet and sought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the, at the point of death. I pray thee, come lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. Do you see what, what kind of desperation this man's in? Hey, I am a father. He's so desperate, he runs and he just throws himself at the feet of Jesus and said, hey, if you don't show up, my daughter's going to die. Mm-hmm. I mean, this brother the other day, I mean, hey, listen, uh, you start having, when you, you start having that stuff, man, you, you, man, your life flashes in front of you. I mean, you're thinking, like he said, he had plans, man. God can change all, it, uh, yeah. your plan can change like that. Yeah, sure. This man, his daughter's going to die, and he throws himself. There's a multitude. He just runs up and says, hey, I, I got to get a hold of God, man. He just throws himself at the feet of Jesus, and he's begging Jesus. He said, hey, please, ha- hurry. I got a problem. My, my daughter's going to die. Here's a man crying out to Jesus, right? He's crying out to him, right? Yeah. Do, 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 am I reading that wrong, John? He's crying out to Jesus. He's begging the Lord. But that's not the character I want you to see. There's another character that shows up in this story. Real quick, are you with me? Verse number 25. I'm sorry, 24. Of course, he, he goes on to say this. Let me say this. He said, just come and lay hands on her. We know she'll be healed and she'll be uh, alive. And Jesus went with him. So here goes Jesus. He's fixing to go fix this problem. And Jesus went with him. And much people followed and thronged him. 
And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, had suffered many of physicians, and had spent all she had, was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind him and touched him. For she said, If I touch but his, his clothes, I shall be made whole. And straightway the fountain of blood was dried up, and she felt her body that she was healed of the plague. And Jesus watched it immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned about the press and said, Who touched me? And the disciples said unto him, Thou seekest uh, see the multitude throng of thee, and thou saith, Who touched me? And he looked around about and to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing uh, she, what she had done, came and fell down before him and told all the truth and said unto her, and he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith that made the heal, go in peace, and, 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 the, be the, and be whole of the plague. Here's a woman that knew that God was busy helping somebody else. Said, I got a problem too. Yes. So what she did is she didn't cry out to him like, like blind Bartimaeus and like uh, this ruler did. She just reached out. Say, I, 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 preacher, you don't know how, how, how long I've been crying. Mm -hmm. Maybe you just need to reach out. Yeah. Good. Just reach out. When are you going to reach out again? Yeah. You know, there's been times in my Christian life I couldn't pray. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what to say. That's good, brother. I, I, I couldn't. I couldn't. I, all, all I could do was reach yeah. out. Amen, brother. Reach That's out. Good. And what I think is crazy is all these people say, well, how are we going to figure out who touched you? I mean, look at all these people. The Lord knew. Yes. And by the way, he, he heard uh, the, the ruler because he already knew he was going to heal her. God ain't too busy that you can't reach out. You're right. You're right. You just need to get a hold of his sense to say, preacher, I can't cry out. I'm done crying. I'm done. I, I, I don't know what else to do. Reach out to him. Yeah. Reach out. Two more real quick. I'm, I'm rushing through this, okay? I'll give you, I, I, you, you tune in and I'll get on YouTube and make a whole video on it. Look at Mark chapter 12. Say, well, preacher, some people call out to God. Yeah. Some people reach out. You know what I thought about that woman? The Bible said she had, she had spent everything. There was no price for her to get healed and there was no physician. She had to reach out to God. You know, this morning I could have all the money in the world. I couldn't help one person. Right. Yeah, I could help them maybe for a little bit, but not spiritually. I could help right. them spiritually. Right. Mark chapter 12, verse 42. Here's, a, here's, a, here's somebody that got God's attention. When there came a certain poor widow, she threw two mites, which were a farling. He called unto his disciples. Now, he's over here in the church. He said unto them, Verily I say unto you, This poor widow has cast in more than all that they which have cast into the treasure. For all they did cast in in their abundance, but she in her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. Say, so, well, preacher, how'd she get God's attention? She just gave out. You give it, so, well, preacher, I ain't got nothing to give. What about your life? Yeah. See, when we, we quote Romans 12, 1, we go, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, you present your bill folks. Mm -hmm. what it says your body. Yeah, right. See, we, we think doing God's work is we'll just give more in the plate. You know what the Lord's set in mind? He said, you, you get God's attention, you just give out. Yeah, yeah. Say, I, I don't know what it is. Maybe God is telling you to help Good, somebody. Right. Maybe God is telling you to lay your life down. I don't know what God's telling you. But this woman got God's attention. All these people right. were in the church, and they were throwing all this uh, of their abundance in the offering. And this woman said, I ain't got much, Lord, but what I got you can have. Right. And listen, yeah. we ain't much. Yeah. Stop looking around thinking you're much. Right. We ain't much. Right. But if you'll just give... If you'll give what God asks you to right, do, you right. will get his attention. Amen. I ain't got no talent. It don't take talent to be faithful. You're right. You're right. Amen. Right. It don't take talent to pray. You're right. Say, I can't preach. God don't call everybody to preach. Right. I can't sing. God don't call everybody to sing. Right. Amen. Right. But I tell you one thing. God calls us to be faithful. Right. Yep. 
He's looking. This woman, she shows up, and I'm sure she, you know, he said, well, he knew everything about her. She's a widow. She ain't got nothing. She threw in everything she had. It goes back to what I was preaching this morning, amen? Just give what you got. God ain't asked, hey, listen, I ain't like these prosperity, I need a jet. Well, if you had the faith you're asking me to have, why don't you just have faith that God's going to give it to you? Why are you asking me to send you money? You nut. Then going to go brag about it. I got three jets. Well, you're an idiot. You know what that makes the world think? That all Christians are a bunch of stingy people and, and we're hoarding up all this stuff. And I'm going to tell you that the government's going to crack down on the church. Y'all listen to the preacher because of that garbage. People, we, we got a church in our community. They're buying up in Warrior. Y'all ever been to Warrior? Y'all know what Warrior is? Th this church, this guy's supposed to be a prophet. He's been up talking to Jesus. No, he's been smoking dope. He ain't been up there talking to Jesus. And they're buying this whole, they're buying all the Warrior. And the, the, the community was against it. You know what the, this preacher done? He went, I can say this because I know this is a fact. He went and bought all the police, uh, the, 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 the police force, brand new police cars. And now all of a sudden, uh, they voted that he can have all this land. I mean, did God say, go ye therefore and buy up all the land? <laughs> Amen. I don't know why I got on that, but anyway, it's free. Brittany, <laughs> give me a dollar. I got to charge you for that. <laughs> oh, you got more money than I do. She didn't give out. Give out. She give out. <laughs> Last one. Look at this. Say, well, preacher, I, I, you know, just give what you got. Yeah. We're not, you know, everybody says, well, you're, you're preaching. On, I ain't preaching no money. Right. Give what you got. Yeah, amen. This is good. I mean, just give whatever you got to the Lord. I, I warn my kids, and I'm going to warn them again. The talent God gave you, the devil wants. Yeah, right. You're right. right. So you better, you better yes, keep it and give it to the Lord. Yes, sir. Last amen. one, Mark chapter 14. We're done. I'm three minutes over. Brother Carpenter, next time you come to our church, you can have an extra 10 minutes. Thank you, <laughs> Mark chapter 14, verse 1. And after two days was the feast of the Passover, unleavened bread. Chief priests and the scribes sought that they might, how they might take him by craft and put him to death. Kind of sounds like the Democrats. <laughs> they said, uh, said, can I say that? <laughs> Not on the feast day. Let's don't be hypocritical here. At least there be an uproar of the people. We're for democracy. We're the party of democracy. Shut up. I'm a... And being in Bethany, the house of Simon the leper, as he said at meat, there was a woman having an alabaster box of ointment. A spiker very precious. She broke the box and poured it out on his head. There were some in, that had indignation within themselves so, say, and said, Why was this waste of ointment made? For if it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and had been given to the poor, and they murmured against her, and Jesus said, Let her alone. Yeah. Why trouble ye her? She has wrought a good work on me. Mm -hmm. For ye have the poor with you always, whensoever, whensoever ye will, ye may do them good. But may ye not have always... Uh, then verse 8, she had done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to burial, for, to bury him. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also, uh, also that she had done shall be spoken of a memorial for her. You know what God said? Every time a preacher stands somewhere, he needs to make more of her. Right. Said, hey, she didn't cry out to God. You don't see her crying out to God. You don't see her reaching out to God. You know, well, you say, well, we do see her giving out, but you know what she done? She broke out. Yeah. She broke out. Because when she took that box, Brittany, and she broke it, there was no putting oil back in there. I mean, she broke the box. Amen? She just yeah. broke out. She said, I'm done. I don't care what they call me. I know that I have a reputation. I don't care anymore. I'm going to break out for Jesus. Good. I'm just breaking out. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, I'm not telling you to jump up and wah, 
out, break out, cut out, and run. That ain't what I'm telling you. If you want to do that, make sure you're speaking English. I ain't got no problem with it. But I can tell you this, when that woman broke out, everybody, oh, and it's amazing. These guys are over there, and they're already, the, they already figured out how much the ointment cost. I mean, good gracious. Let the woman just serve Jesus. Oh, right. look how much it's going to cost. I mean, we, they, if they had got that ointment, they wouldn't have gave it to the poor. No. But this is what I want to say, and then I, I'm, I'm done. That means 20 more minutes. It don't, really. In the comparable gospel of John, this story is told. But it's told a little bit different. Because when she broke the box... She began to anoint the Lord. Now, it's multiple. Read all the comparables. Right. It always said, she's a sinner, she's a sinner, she's a sinner. We got that. But here's the difference about this woman before and after. When she broke that box, and I didn't write the scripture, but in the book of John, when she broke that box, Brother Luke, she began to anoint the Lord. The same anointing the same oil that she put on the Lord got on her. Yeah. And this is what the Bible said, and the odor yeah. filled yes, sir. the room. Right. See, there's a difference between this woman and the other people in the room. Right. Because when she broke the box and she anointed the Lord... The Bible said the odor filled the room, but when she came in, she was a sinner. But when she walked yeah. out, she smelt yeah. just like Jesus. Yes, sir. Yeah. And those other people didn't because they didn't break out. Yeah. They just complained out yeah. and griped out. Yeah. So if you, if you end up, listen, this week at camp, you want to get God's attention? Call out. Yeah. Amen, you want to get cut? I can't call out, preacher. Then reach out. Yes, sir. I can't reach out, preacher. Then give out. Yeah. I can't give out. I, 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 I then break out. Yeah. I mean, just break out. Yeah. Amen, Listen, when you come to camp, I know it's different. You're isolated. But when you go back, yeah. When you go back, you know what they always tell me? Well, it's just, it's just camp. It's just camp. It'll die. I'm gonna tell you something about our church. I'm gonna tell you about something about our church. The first year they came up here, he was telling me, that first year you preached, I, w I was on drugs. I'm not going to lie. I was hurting. I, was, I had pancreatitis. For, it was legal drugs. <laughs> I was hurting so bad. Miss, I, was, I was calling Miss Allison, give me the lot at STAT. Stat. I mean, I was just coming up with all. I was hurting. But I didn't know how sick I was. I don't know what I said. He said, that was the best message I ever heard you preach. Amen. <laughs> he was talking about the straight gate. And I don't even remember none of that. I remember Brother Walt saying, I know how to get there. He got lost. <laughs> he didn't know how to get there. I remember that part. And I said, hey, and I told him yesterday, I said, when I got there, if there's anybody in the nursing, uh, in the nursing home, if there's anybody in the uh, emergency room, I'm faking a heart attack. <laughs> oh, my chest is hurting. They get me right back there. Amen. They came back different. Yeah, amen. Amen. And last year, this man, you know, before, before a girlfriend, <laughs> He's talking to me, and, I was, and I'm, I'm saying this because it's important. He's talking to me. We're driving, and he goes, Brother, I ain't never experienced anything like that. Ain't that what you told me? You've never been around nothing like that. Yeah, and they come back, and we had a great service that, and that Sunday morning. And I've seen our kids. I've seen our kids, the spiritual level, Amen, growing them. Not that they're wicked, but just do you understand, and he does because he's been in our church, the majority of our church is consisted of the young people here today Amen. and they take leadership roles yes, in our sir. church. I didn't go to Jonah and say, Jonah, I bless God. You can believe that same thing. <laughs> Never done that. He got up, started putting his tie on. I didn't tell him to put a tie. If he could get that, man, son, <laughs> we'd be growing in leaps and bounds. <laughs> they come back different. Amen. They got around the movement of right. God. Amen. And that's what we want to see yes, this right. right. But I want to encourage you this morning. Look, I don't know. I'm going through a storm. I mean, the darkest storm I've ever been in my life. But you know what? 
He's still light in the storm. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. If you God's touched you this morning, if He had, don't come to the altar. And don't waste God's time. But maybe you need to do business with the Lord. I'm going to let the pastor decide what he wants to do. But I'm telling you, God's want, we need to get God's yes, attention. Amen. So preacher, you come this morning and I'll let you decide what you want to do this morning. Just a call away, maybe a reach away. Amen. You've heard it. Do business with the Lord. Amen. I don't know what you're going through, but God does. And I know whatever you're going through, He can have it. He's the one to call on, He's the one to come to. He's the one to break it on. Break it to Him. Bring it to Him. Maybe you're here and you're lost. Boy, today would be a good day to be saved. Maybe you're here and you're away from the Lord. Today would be a good day to come home. Maybe you ain't heard from him in a long time. Why don't you come? Get that touch back. Get that fellowship back. Get that walk back. He can do it. He can do it. Might be back there tonight, this morning, and say, Well, I don't know what to say. Hey, maybe you just need to just come by before him. Sometimes you don't know what to say, like the preacher said. But I'm glad the Spirit of God can make groanings for us that cannot be uttered. Maybe you just need to fall on your face before the Lord, get his attention. Say, God, have you forgot about me? I need you. Maybe you know somebody that needs you. Maybe you need to call out for them. something in the service, maybe in the Sunday school hour. You know, it could very well be. Maybe it ain't even anything you've heard all day. You just know God's been all over you. God's giving you an opportunity to do something with it. say one time he's talking about that breaking that box he said when she broke that box she lost all control of all the contents you break yourself on the Lord you lose all control over it it's all his where it goes where it goes put it in his hand let him handle it amen I'm glad we can come to him amen nobody like Jesus amen, amen. If you still haven't done some business with him hey you don't have to rush off him like the preacher you ain't got to have a music playing or a song singing if God's dealing with your heart do something with him and kids go ahead and let loose amen let your hair down and let God do something with you this week
Amen. God wants to help us all. Amen. So let's all stand. And we got dinner on the grounds, lunch. Amen. Got plenty to eat, so stay and eat with us. Amen. And then we're going to hit the road and try to get over to the camp. You pray for us, and we'll be praying for you. Amen. Uh, let's pray God to do something special. Amen. God can do it. Amen. I'm mean, glad you were here today. Amen. Appreciate you coming, Brother Scott, preaching for us. Amen. Uh, been dear friends to us and dear friends to our church, and we appreciate the Lord. Amen. Our friendship. Amen. God's a God of miracles. Amen. Y'all thought the miracle was Jeremiah. I mean, preacher over preaching, Jonah's got a girl. I mean, I, I mean, the Lord is breaking out the banks. Amen. <laughs> miracles all around. Amen. I, I knew there was no help for Trey. God had to give him grace. <laughs> and a grace. Amen. <laughs> That's pretty good, ain't it? <laughs> Come on, but he's, these youngs are growing up and getting mates, and who knows what the Lord will do if he tarries, amen? It's just exciting to see these kids serving the Lord and still going on for God, amen? And new ones coming up every day. Appreciate the Lord. God's good, ain't it? Please pray for us this week, God, to do something special. Appreciate y'all coming up early, this crowd and that crowd. And we just appreciate you, amen. Our church appreciates you, and we're just glad you're here with us today, amen. All hearts clear? Amen. Amen. All right, amen. We got food out there. I guess it maybe won't take long to warm it up, we'll, and then we'll load up and roll out, amen. Amen. Huh? Oh, they said for Ted Mack to say it. What we say, Ted Mack? <laughs> <laughs> amen pray for us continue to remember miss jennifer i know y'all been praying for her. appreciate that amen y'all keep her in your prayers god to continue to do something special with her cancer and, and what god's doing there amen all right good to see miss shelby amen well been a little bit sick and under the weather and she's still plugging along amen she said i'm i'm not moving fast but i'm moving thank god for that amen, amen. god's good amen Miss uh, Peel said her cancer on her arms is doing great, so thank God for that surgery there. Amen. amen. God's good. Amen. All right. Anything else? All right. Let's ask God's blessings on the food, and, and let's ask God to help us and watch over us the rest of this day.